the culture wars, the the wokeness wars may in fact just be kind of a, a distraction from those more fundamental issues. It's a point that uh, your friend uh, Peter Thiel recently made on Barry Weiss's podcast. I want to play that clip real quick and get your reaction to uh, Thiel's statement as you know another uh, fellow Floridian. The focus on identity politics, on the woke religion, you know, is probably a distraction from stagnation. It's a distraction from economics. It's a distraction from the way in which uh, the younger generation in the U.S. Uh, is probably going to have a hard time having as a good standard of living as their parents. And so there's a set of issues we do not want to talk about. You know, I think DeSantis would make a terrific president if he's the Republican nominee. I will strongly support him in, in 2024. But I, I do worry that uh, focusing on, on the woke issue as ground zero is, is not quite enough. So, I mean, I agree pretty much with Peter Thiel that while there's aspects of these culture wars that are important and worth discussing, that they, they shouldn't really be central and we've got bigger fish to fry. There's the lagging economic growth, inflation, a lot flows from, from that, but there's also the degradation of our institutions. And in some sense, like I was saying before, what we really need is a strict constitutionalist to kind of restore the balance of powers, uh, no, no, be very clear about where state action ends. And I'm not exactly sure that DeSantis is that. And, and maybe he's better than the alternatives on offer at the moment. But uh, I just think it's always worth sticking to our principles and pointing out how far short just about every modern politician fa uh, falls. Uh, otherwise, there's really no path towards something better if we don't kind of keep our eye on the ball. Sure. Well, first off, I, I just think DeSantis is your guy. I, I think you're going to begrudgingly, I guess, or, or maybe a little slower get there, but it just seems obvious to me. I mm -hmm. mean, I think you will find somebody that has an absolute respect for the Constitution. And I, I, you know, some of the comments that you read there, Nick, I mean, people are saying he's going after free speech or something like, what can't you say in Florida? You can say whatever you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, specifically on Teal, I, he happens to be a good friend of mine, so let me not hide that. Um, you know, I believe that you, I like him a lot and I think he's a brilliant thinker, obviously. But I believe that you can walk and chew gum at the same time and you can deal with the woke stuff, which, by the way, Zach, when you deal with the woke stuff, you start fixing the institutions because the institutions you're worried about, they're being destroyed by woke. They're being destroyed by diversity, equity and inclusion. So you can do that at the same time. You then can do all of the things that have led Florida to be the freest and most popular uh, prosperous state in the union and the, and the proof is only in the three fingered pudding it's here just look what's going on in florida so if you were to say to me well he's focusing on woke so now look what's happening florida's cities uh, yeah. are being overrun by drugs and homeless people well then we might have an issue if or or some other version but it's actually all working here so mm. I, I i think that that argument is a little uh thin to me when you just compare it with the facts on the ground I just can think as the zeal with which you prosecute that war can often the war on woke can often cause you to uh, engage in just really gross state overreach uh, in the ways we've we've already talked about before. I guess we we just disagree on whether that that constitutes state overreach. Um, it's the same thing with um, you know cleaning up crime or cleaning or, you know, uh, uh, controlling the border. These all these things all sound good and orderly, but there's ways that if you uh, don't have a strict fidelity to the rule of law, that they can go horribly bad and, and authoritarian. I mean, we didn't even really get a chance to go much into immigration, but some of how that's played out here has mm -hmm. uh, been alarming, whether it's deporting people to uh, Martha's Vi or uh, you know moving people from Texas to Martha's Vineyard or oh I think it's great I think it's great no, buying no, land that's, uh, I, I find it reprehensible to be quite yeah, honest no, it's, I mean no, 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 to no, use because... to use people as props like that and the rhetoric around immigration I you know this for me is one of the biggest problems I have with the Republican Party and I and I don't pretend that the Democratic Party is good on immigration but. You know, my grandparents, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm talking to you from New York City where my grandparents showed up 100 years ago. Uh, they would not be allowed in the country, uh, you know, now. And 
the anger at immigrants is just wrong. I think the Republican Party is making a huge mistake by being so zealously no, no, anti-immigrant. But well, first off, I don't think they're anti-immigrant. I think they're they anti are anti-immigrant. I think they're anti. Dave, Donald think they're Trump. Anti Donald Trump. You're Donald Trump wanted to reduce, and he said it constantly. I want to reduce legal immigration as well as illegal immigration. Ron DeSantis is not talking about legal immigration. He's talking only talks about immigration as an illegal phenomenon, and drugs are being smuggled across the Mexican border. These that has nothing to do with immigration policy. It has to do with a failure of immigration policy, of letting people who want to come here and participate and contribute to American life. So, And if we were right, gonna so, want, if we're going to want economic growth, immigration is going to be a big part of that. So I think there's just, um, you know, there so, some of the the focus, the focal points are just wrong at, at the moment. And from my point of view. What worries me about that fight that he has against wokeness is that I'm not convinced that he really is going to be a defender of the Constitution. You know, like when, when I moved to Florida, I liked that DeSantis swerved away from the public health establishment. So a lot of what you're saying resonates with me, Dave. Uh, I, you know, I like that he put a big emphasis on letting individuals make their own choices. I think it was good for the people living in Florida. I think it was good for the economy of Florida. What I don't like about the post-COVID DeSantis is now he seems pretty willing to use state power to advance a conservative social agenda and punish his enemies. And I'm worried. So, so what would what up. would be an example of that? I, I assume you mean Disney, right? That's one. Uh, that That's a great example. Yes. OK, he so we should him. we should do the Disney thing. Look, yep. Disney had tons. I've actually got a list of them here because I had a feeling you were going to ask me about them so I can read them all off <laughs> to you. Um, Disney, because I know this is an issue with libertarians, that we should never use yeah, yeah. the government for anything, except what he did was use the government in the exact way that libertarians want the government to be used. You don't want government overreach, but you do want to make sure there isn't crony capitalism. Disney took, uh, DeSantis took special benefits away from Disney, meaning Disney had been granted special benefits related to building codes and water rights and this airport and taxes and a whole bunch more, I'm happy to read them all off to you, that were not granted to their competitors, such as SeaWorld and Universal Studios and Gator World, which in essence do the same thing. They're, they're theme parks. So Disney, he then took their special rights away, thus evening the playing field, which is to me the ultimate thing that a libertarian would want. You would want yeah, the government he, only to act to even the playing field. So the, the playing field was yeah. like this, and then he used the government to do this. There are thousands, right, uh, or hundreds of special tax districts in Florida that were in place and remain in place. He also carved out in his social media law, he carved out an exception for Disney before they crossed him on gay rights. Um, so it seems like it's, I mean, part of, I, you know, and I'll let Zach speak for himself, but for me, part of it is that he is not acting out of principle, but he's actually acting out of personal peak. Hey, thanks for watching an excerpt from our conversation with Dave Rubin. You can watch another excerpt from that conversation right here or the full conversation over here. And tune in every Thursday at 1 p.m. for more conversations like this.